What's up, guys? We're actually here with another uh, BYU veteran. Probably the nicest guy on the team. Nice. Uh, actually, just pronounce your name before I say something stupid. So, full name, Atu Naisa, but I go by Naisa for short. And your last name? Mahe. Mahe? Yes. Okay, see, so yeah, I was going to mess that up. Uh, just start us off, first off, where are you from, and uh, how long have you been at BYU? Yeah, I was uh, born in West Valley, then uh, moved to Taylorsville. Then after Taylorsville, moved to West Jordan probably around my freshman year. So I've been at West Jordan ever since. Gotcha. And uh, graduated 16, started my mission. I went to Tonga. And then I came back in 18, and I've been at BYU ever since. Are you Tongan? Yeah, I'm Tongan. You, did you speak it before you went on your mission? I mean, I knew all the swear words. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it goes, huh? I knew the basic things. That, <laughs> are you hungry? You know, I knew when I was in trouble. That was the only time. That was the only thing I knew. Hey, that's a universal language, though. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> it's the expressions. Right. But uh, that's pretty much all I knew. As far as understanding it, yeah, that's how much of that's, that's all I knew. I didn't really get, get to understand the language and dive into it um, until I said my mission. That's super cool. So you said you were born in West Valley, then moved to, Taylor, to Taylorsville? Yeah. So did you grow up mostly in Taylorsville? I was uh, there from, like, third grade to sixth grade. Gotcha. And... Oh, sorry, going into seventh grade and then eighth freshman year, uh, West Jordan. Gotcha. So where'd you play Little League? Taylorsville. Oh, yeah? Yeah. A lot what? of people don't know about know that about me, but yeah. Did you want to go to West Jordan or did you just, like, your family just moved and then it was like, that's where I'm going? So it was my mom's work. She, take, she takes care of the elderly. Gotcha. And uh, we ended up finding a spot down there that would be a good fit for, you know, her clients. Yeah. And so we ended up just moving in there. That's sweet. So what's your family like? You just mentioned your mom. Yeah, so I'm uh I'm the youngest of ten. Ten? Yeah, youngest of ten. Dang. And then so <laughs> there are ten of us. <laughs> and then my mom and dad. My mom and dad are they're from Tonga. Okay. Um moved down here around nine around seventy one. Okay. Seventy one, seventy three. And um there's a few of us that who were born in Tonga. And then there's like four or five of us who were born down here. So were you born in Tonga? No, I was born in West Valley. Yeah, I was born down here. Okay. Um, so are you like middle of the pack, youngest? Youngest. You're the youngest one? I'm the youngest, man. I'm the spoiled brat, yeah. <laughs> no, I, spoiled brat. It definitely, my family definitely takes really good care of me. Being the youngest and all, and everyone's all, all grown up, definitely look out for me and stuff, so. That's good. So how old's your oldest sibling? Man. How much older are they uh, than you? Definitely a lot older. So yeah. I feel like uh, the... My sister, who's just above me, she's around, like, nine years older than me. Oh, really? Yeah. That's a, the next one up? That's the next one up. Oh, wow. Uh -huh. So, and then there's eight more. And there's eight more, yeah. There's, so they're all old. I mean, I'm old. Yeah. But uh, they're older. <laughs> <laughs> How old are you? <sighs> You're going to, I'm 25, yeah. 25? Yeah. Hey, that's not bad, though. I'm, I'm old. You're a, girl, <laughs> you're a grown man. Um. So, so you go to West Jordan. When did you, like, what was coming out of high school? Like, were you offered? Did you walk on? Like, so I was definitely, um, football didn't, recruiting, as far as recruiting went, didn't start to pick up until probably my junior year. Yeah. That's when I started taking, like, junior, uh, like, those junior days or whatever. Yeah. So I went out to Boise. Um, Boise saw my film, and they're, they're like, hey, like, we know we're really interested. want to see what you can do coming to camp or something. Yeah. So then I went there, then Utah was hitting me up a little bit, and then BYU, they're like, you know, you should come down to junior day, and then that's when I was offered. Really? At junior day? Yeah, I was offered a junior day. Like, where you just go walk around and, like, take a picture, and they, like, show you, like, the campus or whatever? Pretty much, yeah. They uh, they saw my, because I put, I put some clips together my yeah. sophomore year, and um, I guess they I guess they liked it, and um, they are saying they wanted to offer me. So that was my first offer going, that was my first offer. Yeah. BYU was my first offer in high school. And honestly, I didn't really know how recruiting went. I didn't know how the whole recruiting process was like. I felt like as soon as uh, it was Mendenhall at the time, okay. as soon as he offered me, and I was like, you know, I felt that if I didn't, uh, if I didn't accept it, I was gonna get it taken away. Yeah. So I, I committed right on the spot. Really? Yeah. I, 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 even, even looking back, I remember that he was kind of surprised. He's like, "Oh, you want to commit now?" 
And I was like, yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't want you to take away the offer, so I'm, com- I'm going to commit right now. It's free college. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. funny. So did you have any other schools, like, show interest, or was it pretty, like, you were pretty committed and it was it was what it was from then on? Yeah, as soon as I committed right off the bat, um, Boise State and Utah, they both hit me up and they're like, hey, you committed? Are you, you fully in? And I just told them, yeah, I feel like uh, BYU is a place for me. I mean, growing up, Growing up, I was a big time BYU fan. So, is it somewhere you always wanted to go? Then definitely somewhere I always wanted to go. Definitely where my my family wanted me to go, and especially my dad. Mm-hmm. My dad was a big time BYU fan. I just remember watching. Uh, I feel like the first season that I started watching, it was, they had this thing called the Tongan Trio. They had Manase Tonga, Fui Vakapuna, and Harvey Unga. Yeah. So that that was the Tongan Trio right there, and I just saw, man, I want to be a running back. Yeah. I want to be a running back. <laughs> <laughs> I was probably like eight at yeah. the time. I was like, yeah, definitely going to play football, going to be running back, go play for BYU. That was dope. Those guys were dogs, actually. I remember that. Oh, yeah, man. That was a – that was a – That was like – I don't – I mean, that as far back as I can remember, like those were like the first names where I like knew who they were like in college football. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like where I actually like put a face to a name and like remember them rather than like just seeing dudes and like numbers running around. You know what I'm saying? No, definitely. That's sweet. Um, So – did, do you have a lot of, like, family around here? Or is, like, obviously you have a big personal family, but, like, do you have a lot of cousins, aunts, uncles, all that around here? Oh, I for sure do. Not, um, as far as Utah County goes, not really. Yeah. But um, more in Salt Lake County and West Valley, West Jordan area. That's pretty much where all my, my sisters reside. Gotcha. I have two, I have two siblings who stay in Tonga. Oh, for real? Um, but just uh, the rest of us are down here. So was it important to you to, like, stay local? Like, was that something you were excited for, to stay local so you were, like, near your family? Oh, yeah, that definitely came into consideration when uh, thinking about going to BYU. It was like, hey, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be uh, right down the alley. Yeah. And uh, be able to have my mom and my parents come over right. to the games. So that played a big factor. But, uh, I mean, I just always wanted to go to BYU. So That's sweet. So how important, like, how important for you is family? Because obviously, like, culturally, it's huge, right? Uh-huh. Like just explain a little bit about what that's like and kind of what it means to you. Yeah, I mean, obviously, culturally, in the Tongan culture, and even in the Pacific culture in general, like, family is such a huge thing. Mm-hmm. Um, always looking out for each other. And, I mean, being the youngest, and I will say that I was a little spoiled growing up. <laughs> Definitely felt the family love just because I was the youngest and everyone right. was looking out. Um. But, I mean, as far as culture goes, I feel like that's ingrained in to every single individual, as far as I know, uh, being yeah. a Pacific Islander, that family comes first. I mean, God and then family comes first, but right. also, obviously, just um, family play, does play a big factor in who I am, like, uh, individually and also culturally. Dude, I think it's so cool how how tight you guys are and how, like like you said, God and then family. And, like, a lot of people say that. Like, you hear that all the time in Texas. Well, Texas, they probably throw football. Like, it's like... God, football, and then family, uh-huh. but <laughs> but like you guys, like the Polynesians actually live it. Like it m- actually means something to them, and and everybody says, "Oh, family first, or whatever." But the the tight knit community and uh, the generosity towards like families in the Polynesian culture is like there's n- there's no one else like it. Do you think it's just because like is that just from the time you're born? Like is that just ingrained in you? Like hey, look family always first is that kind of why that works out that way or or what i always wonder i feel like um i mean i can't speak for every all of the polynesian culture but i feel like we all come from humble beginnings yeah and uh growing up not having much you know and then uh, an opportunity to give back is kind of like a really huge thing and it's really uh it's really looked up upon yeah or how should i say it it's uh smiled upon yeah smiled upon <laughs> And uh, being just being a good, great person, um, definitely treating other people the way you want to be treated, the golden rule. Right. I feel like a lot of people are just naturally grown up onto that. We're always taught to respect the older and to love the younger. Yeah. And that's kind of like something that I grew up around. That's cool. My I mom like always telling me respect the older, um, love the younger. And I mean, it, you can definitely see when it comes to like uh, family functions and family events, anyone who's around, you know, to tell them, hey, come get come some, get some food. Yeah. Um, Come enjoy, you know, come enjoy the company. Um, I feel like that's how I've always grown around. Uh, that's what I've grown around. 
and um, pretty similar to other people who I've talked to, you know, who are po- Pacific Islanders. Yeah. Just uh, always taught to, to do that specifically. So I feel like it just, yeah, it's really ingrained into it. Dude, that's super know. cool. I love it. So were you super excited? You, both your parents are Tongan, right? Yeah. So, like, when you got your call to Tonga, was that, like, were you stoked? Or were you kind of like, like, what, what was that like? So, I originally wanted to go to Japan, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Japan, huh? Really want Why? <clears throat> because I, I was an anime head. I, really? Yeah, I loved anime. <laughs> I was That's like, funny. The, the first, the closest thing that came to my mind was, like, if I get my mission call, I wanted to be to Japan. Really? So, I put Japan, and then, of course, my, my parents wanted me to go to Tonga, so I put Japan, then... On the, on the bottom. <laughs> That's funny. As, a, as far as like references, <clears throat> right? But um, no, my mom, she just she told me like I feel like you're gonna get called to Tonga. Oh yeah, she like get she manifested it. She re- she really did, and she was <laughs> like, you know, you should wear your cultural attire. We have like you know tupenus. Yeah, what what skirts. explain that? What is it? So we have a a tupenu. Yeah, it's pretty much like a it's a pretty much a skirt to other people. Yeah, and then we have this tauvala and then a gaffa. Pretty much what holds the Tauvala. It's kind of like a like a wrap around. Okay. Um not really culturally inclined to un- to understand like what what, what that means. Mm-hmm. But uh, she wanted me to wear the whole attire because she was like, I, I know you're just gonna get called the Tonga. Yeah. I was like, Mom, I'm just gonna wear my suit. I'm not gonna <laughs> get called the Tonga. I thought if anything, I thought I was gonna be in state. Yeah. And so she came out and uh or well, I just got in my suit, took out my call and that was probably the it was crazy. I just read down the line and it said, Nukuala Fatonga. Yeah. And, um, man, my mom just burst out in tears. Even my dad. Really? Yeah, and everyone. But, I mean, do you know how they have the board to yeah. see where everyone's going and people yeah. are guessing? Yeah. Like, pretty much majority of my family just put that little, like, right smack dab onto that little dot. Really? Fatonga. So, everyone was just wanting me to go there, so. That's awesome. So it was, it was big time. Like it, everybody was like super happy about it. You were excited. Like it was cool. Oh, super happy. I mean, especially trying to understand the culture more. Right. Being the youngest in my family, you know, coming from Tonga, trying to um, learn English mm-hmm. and getting jobs and stuff, and you know, trying to stay in, inclined with English. Yeah. So I definitely wasn't really um, tuned as far as uh, um, language wise. Right. But I knew I'd get. I'd get that. I'd get all of that. For Same sure. Mission, so. Is there only one mission in Tonga? Yeah, there is. There used to be two. Gotcha. They used to separate the outer islands from the from the mainland. But um they switched that. So it's all just one. So it's all just one again. So how many different like did you go to different islands while you were on your mission? Oh yeah, definitely. I served um I served in the mainland, which is Nukualofa. Okay. And then I served in Vavau, which is another so there's three main groups, uh three main group islands. Okay. There's Nukualofa. There's Vava'u, and then there's um, Ha'apai. Okay. And I got to serve in all three. Oh, really? Uh-huh. So they're like they're like the main groups, and then they're sectioned off into little groups. Uh, okay. Into little islands. Gotcha. So if, like, within one area on your mission, could you be, like, going to different islands? Like, different little islands? So so the last six months of my mission, yeah. Um, I served in I served in one main we, – we stayed in one main land. Yeah. Uh, they called it um, Ha'afeva. Okay. And then we covered six different other islands. So, like, one day you'd go to this island, one day you'd go to that island? Uh, basically, we'd, probably, we'd, we'd split it up into, like, weeks. Okay. But it was like that. Like, one, di- like one day you could be here and another day you could be there, like, yeah. as far as islands. Yeah. I mean, on Sundays we'd have to go to, um, we'd have to, go to another island um, because they didn't have any uh, priesthood holders. To start church and everything, so we were rep- basically representing the branch president. Really? So yeah, we conducted, we presided, we served the sacrament, we taught class. That's awesome. The whole thing. That's crazy. Yeah, and that place was called Tungua, so it was like right, right down the. It was probably like thirty minutes away from. Each island is about thirty minutes away to an hour. On a just what kind of like you just take a boat? Yeah, we took like a little motorboat. <laughs> Man, it was crazy. I will tell you what. <laughs> what? We, uh, the first time we had to go over there. To for sacrament and everything, um, it was probably the most stormiest day out really? of my six months. Yeah, my very first day trying to get to another island. And you're just on like, <coughs> like a like a fishing boat type thing. Yeah, or what? Just a fishing motorboat. Um, just me, my companion, and then the person who was guiding us. <laughs> and it was bad. Like our boat, we could literally touch, like our our packets could touch the the 
the ocean because we were just inclined like this. We had really? to lean forward. I mean, if it, if it ducked left, we had to lean right. Dude. It was, and it was like raining. The, the weather was really bad. I thought I was going to die. Were you so scared? Oh, man, I was frightened. That was my first time like being out there in the ocean like that. Yeah. On a smaller boat. Dude. And uh, I just remember looking up to the Lord and I was like, hey, this <laughs> is, I really had to be, put myself in that position. <laughs> Like if it's Man. time for me to go, then you know at least I'm at least I'll be fine. <laughs> hey, that's a good. You know what they say. I mean, if you're gonna die, like being on your mission, it's probably a good time. You know, probably yeah. You know, you you hopefully you're in a good place with the Lord at that point. That that definitely was definitely was. That's thankfully, funny. Thankfully, that's, dude, that's wild. So, uh, what like explain to me a little bit about what your mission was like as far as like the the like. The economy, the demographic, like, I'm assuming of a poor place. Like, I know yeah. we had talked before, you said, I asked you if you, like, went, if you guys tracked it or knocked doors, you said it was, like, there weren't doors, right? Some places didn't have doors, yeah. That's uh, it, mostly in the outer island. Mm. As far as the mainland, Nukualofa, it's uh, pretty modern. Okay, so um, they have, like, neighborhoods and stuff? Neighborhoods, roads, okay. cars, stores. Gotcha. They have, like, this generic version of a uh, Costco. Oh yeah, <laughs> I, forgot what, I forgot what they call it, but it's actually pretty cool. That's funny. Um, but like as far as like the outer islands, some of them, that's when you start to see the third world country. You know, um, some even even with the places that I stayed in the last six months of my mission, there was still like uh, coconut leaves covered into like smaller houses. Like but like most of those were pretty vacant. Yeah. Um, because um, those families moved out to the mainland because gotcha. they could afford it. But as far as like I that was the closest I got to see um Tonga as it was before. Mm -hmm. You know, way back then. But um yeah, definitely they definitely know how to live off the land though. Yeah. Like that's the one thing. Yeah, being being so far away from the mainland, you have to be able to be good with your crops and um they definitely have a whole plantation of, you know, food when it comes to like starches and all that stuff and then meat of course. Mm -hmm. Has to be, um, it comes by boat, and then that's how they get it. They get that's how they get most of their meat. Really? Uh huh. They don't have like cows, chickens, pigs. <laughs> oh, they do. Oh, yeah. Pig, pigs is a very big thing in all in all islands. Gotcha. Um, but as far as everything else, like chicken, some of them have chicken, chickens ro uh, rolling around. Yeah. But um, as far as like the other meat, they'd have to get it. Gotcha. Gotcha. Is that like? Where does that come from? Like the main mainland, or yeah, either from the mainland, or um, we we mostly get their stuff from like New Zealand and like other Pacific islands. Really, uh, they get it uh, shipped out to them. That's wild. Distributed. I didn't realize it was like that. Mm -hmm. So, um, what would you say like is the number one thing from your mission that you like apply into your life now? I'd say one of the biggest things is probably the language. Yeah. Um, coming back from my mission, I mean, my parents, that's their first language. I was oh, able yeah. to find the converse with them fluently and that fluidly. Cool? Yeah. You know, it was really amazing. Man, I didn't realize how funny my dad was. <laughs> like, <laughs> always toying with my mom, saying things yeah. get underneath her skin. And yeah, you didn't she, even know it the whole time. I didn't know it, man. I, I, I regret not knowing Tongan growing up because, man, that guy was a funny guy. That's funny. So... Just being able to converse with them, I feel like the language is something that I apply a lot. And then even the knowledge in general as far as church goes, like, I'd, I I mean, I was very um, active growing up, mm -hmm. um, come from a very active family, but I just felt like uh, my knowledge of, of the gospel wasn't as, um, I didn't have much knowledge of the gospel. Gotcha. I feel like the only thing I had a testimony of was probably the, um, the atonement. Yeah. That's kind of what led me to serving the mission. Mm -hmm. You know, feeling that forgiveness. For sure. And then definitely going on my mission and just expanding my knowledge of the church. Yeah. And just seeing how it was for, you know, for what it was. Mm -hmm. um, it's definitely changed my perspective. And, um, yeah, just really blessed to be able to have that opportunity. No, for sure. Like, uh, the way I explain it, going on your mission, is like before you grow up going to church, right, and you have, you have like a, a faith, where it's like, okay, I, I believe this is true. Uh, but once you go on your mission, you now have, like, the knowledge and the understanding to, like, 
back up that belief and that faith, if that makes sense. It's almost like you, you kind of take two things, and you put them together and kind of bridge that gap between like, okay, I, I, I feel this, I believe this, but like, why? And then you kind of like understand like more of the doctrinal principles and, and the restoration all and all that. So I know exactly what you mean with that. Yeah. Well, even, uh, oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, even being in a third world country and yeah. just seeing how faithful members were down there. Yeah. Like it was, it was amazing to me. It reminded me of my parents. Yeah. And I could see why my parents were, are the way they were, you know, as far as faithfulness and paying tithing mm -hmm. and little things like that. Um, I could just see because a lot, a lot of the people in, in Tonga, you know, don't come from much. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the faithfulness that they had in order to, you know, I feel like that really uh, showed me and humbled me um, from, where I, from where I came from. And um, just seeing where the church took them, where, where their faith took them. Yeah. So that was, a, that was a really cool experience. Gosh, that's so cool. I bet that's life-changing. Like, whenever, because the, <coughs> even if you, like, some of the poorest people here, that still have homes can still afford homes or whatever are like you, you see. So like a third world country, it's like, we're so blessed. Even if you feel like you're middle class, lower middle class, like whatever you are, like economically, you're still so much better off than some of these other countries. It's kind of crazy. And like yeah. you get so wrapped up and obviously it's not something you think about on a daily, but like you see those videos or like you get to go visit it first person. It's like kind of changes your perspective. I would imagine. Yeah, definitely. That's so cool. One more question about your mission. What is one thing you would say to someone who's considering, they're kind of on the fence about whether they should go on a mission or not? Man, um, I'd say uh, it's for those of you who are thinking about serving a mission or you know, even if you're not thinking about serving a mission, I'd say, you know, definitely we definitely put could put into consideration. Um, it's definitely a life-changing opportunity. Even if uh, you feel like you don't have much knowledge of the gospel, I promise you'll learn. Mm -hmm. And and um, you definitely get out what you put in. For sure. Um, yeah, that's huge. Mission. So if you, I would just say just to go. Yeah. Um, experience it, you know, definitely don't. Um, yeah. Sorry, that's pretty much all I got for you. No, I mean, I'm with <laughs> you. Like, whatever you got to do to get yourself out there, I think it's uh yeah, life life changing for sure. More than anything else I've done. Yeah, I would definitely recommend it. That's exactly that's that's probably there. You go ten out, ten out of ten recommend. Oh, yeah. eleven out of ten. <laughs> uh, so you come home, go right to BYU. Go straight like, to BYU. What and so what was your first season? My first season was eighteen. Eighteen like in twenty eighteen. Okay, and uh, did you redshirt? I did redshirt. I was um, man, it was such a quick transition. I came back June twenty second. Oh yeah, and then I enrolled in the twenty fifth, the of June of June, yeah. So you got into that summer semester. Or whatever I got like? straight into the summer semester, bro. That's crazy. Oh man, it was a culture shock for sure coming I back. Bet. Did, and uh, oh, sorry, I didn't ask this. Did you speak any English in Tonga, or was it all you were speaking Tonga the whole time? I did serve in an English ward. Okay. Um, so yeah, we we spoke we spoke English a lot. Okay. But majority of the time, it was definitely Tongan. Gotcha. Okay, um, I wasn't sure if you went from speaking Tongan for two years to, like, back to English, and that was, like, a whole nother, like... Oh, no, even even now, like, I still... They call this thing where you call fobbed out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's kind of when you just, like, mix your words. Yeah. And um, sometimes don't even make sense. Like, I do that a lot often. Really? Still, like, to this day. Like, I would think of things in, in Tongan, but I can't really express it in English. Mm. And there would be times where I'm that. stuttering, where I'm trying to, like, think of a word. Yeah. Um, I can think of it in Tongan. Right. I tell you that, but uh, sometimes, yeah, it just doesn't, it's a, it's still, it still kind of affects me to this day. So yeah, even going back to, <laughs> I my, fr my very first class was writing 150. Oh, wow. Sitting there trying to write papers. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it definitely was not great papers I was putting out when I first got back from a mission. That's funny. Well, I don't speak a different language. My papers still aren't great. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, is there anybody else on the team who speaks Tongan that you Ever talk to? Yeah, there, there's a few. There's a few of us uh, who serve Tongan speaking. Oh, really? Whether it was in California or we got a lot of California yeah. speakers. Gotcha. Like Sony, Makassini, Raider. Yeah. Um, there's definitely a lot of other people uh, before previous to us. For sure. Um, That's cool. Who served in Tonga. That's way sweet. That's good that you still get to use it. So 
sorry, back to um, football, you 18, you redshirted because you freaking got thrown right into it right away. Um, and then 19, you played. 19, I played, yeah. As a redshirt freshman, you played sure. how many, like, walk me through that season. I played, um, I played all 13 games back in 2019. I was um, second string behind Kyrus. Gotcha. And um, and not a bad dude to be second string behind. Oh, definitely not. No, <laughs> Did you learn a lot from him? Oh yeah, man, Kyrus is that's my bigger brother right there. Yeah. He um, I mean, even for himself, he, playing D line was was fairly new to him. Mm -hmm. He played tight end in high school. Oh really? He was. I didn't know end. that. Yeah, he played tight end in high school, but coming, just being big, um, converted him to playing D line and. As far as, like, footwork and just hard work and dedication, I feel like I learned a lot from him. Mm -hmm. it's, but, and, and even Zoe, um, I played behind Zoe as well. Yeah. So I definitely got to learn from those two. And, man, 2019, I feel like, is when I kind of start, finally started to find my niche in, in the game. Um, because back in 2018, when I redshirted, I actually tore my MCL during the fall camp. Gotcha. I feel like I was having a pretty good fall camp so far. Um, someone just got thrown into my leg. Oh, man. So that kind of, um, but definitely gave me time, you mm. know, t for me to rec uh, recover as far as coming back from the mission and everything. Right. And then going into 2019, man, I feel um, I started two games that year. Yeah. Um, just because Kairos was feeling kind of, um, either he was sick or just a little injured. Yeah. So that was uh, Tennessee and uh, San Diego State. Yeah. They say that Tennessee game. Everybody I've asked says that Tennessee game was one of their favorites. Man, that Tennessee game was wild. <laughs> I would tell you that it was. Um, it was definitely a once in a lifetime experience. Um, as far as being a freshman. Yeah. And um, yeah, I actually got. I was, that was the first game I ever started. Really. Um, well, I mean, that was like what third game in the season, or what? That was about our. That was our second game. Second we, game. We first played Utah. Okay. And oh man, U Utah being my first ever collegiate football game to play in was the season opener was Utah. I'm pretty sure, yeah. That's wild. Yeah, back in 2019, uh, I was on I was on my mission, so I don't know. Oh, yeah. I didn't watch nothing, but so sorry. Keep going. The you're at Tennessee second game, and you're starting. Yeah, that was wild for me. Um, but you know, going into going into practice and like. Um, going through the playbook and everything, I felt like I had it down. Yeah. And I felt like coach was confident in me um, to be able to start. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I had, I, had a, I had a pretty decent game. I think I had five tackles, uh, one QB rush. Mm -hmm. um, but for a freshman, like, for myself, like, I just felt like, like, wow, like, this is, you know, I, this is something I feel like I can actually do in college. Dude, that's I feel like so I can dope. actually play with the big boys. Yeah. And um, definitely a motivator, um, confidence booster. Right. And going to, into the rest of the season. And so it was definitely a fun time. Do you get n nervous before games? Yeah. I feel like all the time I get, there's some an more anxious. Yeah. You know, trying to get a feel for the game before it even starts. Right. I feel like I'm trying to envision myself, like what I'm going to do in certain situations, watching film. Knowing if um, you know the guard is off a little bit, whether that's a pass or if he's pulling, mm -hmm. I'd really just try to dive into that, so I can keep myself confident and like, okay, if he's, if I at least know what he's gonna do, I can eliminate specific plays in my head, just to be more confident with um, whether I fire off or if it's gonna be a pass or not. So like, I definitely, definitely get really anxious. Yeah. Um, and trying to see, but. As far as nervousness goes, yeah, I definitely get nerves are there. Yeah. So are, are you are you saying your like your preparation, your film is what kind of gives you that confidence and kind of helps you calm down come game time? It's cuz you oh, like yeah. you know going into the game you have like your cues that you're picking up on. Yeah, if I'm if I'm if I'm on top of my game for that week as far as practice goes, hydration, taking care of my body and um watching film. Mhm. Mm like I feel like the confidence, my confidence just boosts up, um, just because um, I feel like I know that I'm ready for this game. Yeah. The only time when I'm, the only time when I'm actually really nervous is when I, I feel like I haven't prepared enough. That's what they say. 
when I haven't prepared enough, then I'm, you know, I'm, I'm given the what ifs, you know, because right. I didn't do this. What if this happens? Mm -hmm. So, um, I would say just as far as my preparation, if I'm prepared for, for the week, then I'm pretty confident in what I can do. Gotcha. Uh, so what are you like, what will you be this year? Like senior red shirt, senior, I, yeah, is, yeah. This is your, what would that be, 19, 18, 19, 20, 26 year? Yes, sir. Okay, that's big time. Um, what are you most excited for going into this year? Um, just going in healthy. Mm -hmm. I feel like um, I've kind of been on the injury side in my career. Um, but as far as uh, staying, keeping myself healthy and getting ready for the season, like that's the thing I'm most excited about. I'm also really excited just to play with, I mean, play with you, play with the boys. Right. It's my last year here, so I just, um, most excited just to make memories. That's cool. Oh, uh, who's been your favorite player that you've played with? Like, it doesn't, not, not necessarily personal, but like, favorite person to be on the field with. As far as, uh, like, offense and defense, both. It I can be, yeah, it can be either. Man, that's a... I mean, I feel like for the most part, I have, I have, I, I love everyone on the team. But as far as like the D line goes, mm -hmm. um, I feel like we're always pretty tight knit group. Yeah, you guys do a good, a good job of that. And um, yeah, like even previous to this year, um, like had Earl, Gabe, Lopa, like just the D line in general. Like we all get together, um, have fun, and you know, um, as far as this year goes, I'm really excited to play with my boys. I mean, there's only seven of us. As yeah. of now. Right. So people I've been with, like Caden Hawes. Yeah. Um, Bruce Mitchell, Josh Singh. Mm -hmm. All these boys I've come so close to. Um, definitely being the veteran of the of, of them. Jackson Craven's coming in from. Um, so I'm just, I'm definitely excited to just play with all those guys. Yeah, it's a good group of dudes. Like, just like genuinely good people. Like, yeah. <laughs> everybody you named. Um, what's the best part about being... Like a college athlete or college football player? Man, being, um, especially playing football, it's, um, I feel like it's just being, uh, being part of the process of um, becoming your best self mm -hmm. and what you like. Yeah. And what you love. Like uh, my passion of playing football, like I get to go out there, I get to wake up in the morning every day and trying to better myself and becoming a better football player. Yeah. And, um, like, that grind, I really just love that process of becoming the person that I am. I mean, because obviously coming from injury, you definitely have to build yourself back up from ground zero. Mm -hmm. And uh, definitely had to do that more than once. Yeah. But, I mean, I, I've fallen in love with trying, with um, getting myself to be, you know, the right weight. Um, and to getting stronger, to getting faster, more agile. So that I can become an asset to the team, like that's something that I really, I really enjoy about being an athlete. As far as like, socially, I feel like everyone really just likes BYU football. Yeah, Provo, for sure. Utah County in general, mm -hmm. and um, just like when everyone, when any, when anyone, like if I'm at Walmart or something, and someone says like, "Hey, you play football," I say, "Yeah, I play at BYU," and then just to see them like their their face like, yeah. light up. <laughs> It's so crazy to me. I like I I really I never experienced that outside of um, yeah college, and um, just people just being excited about football like that, uh, you know, uplifts me and motivates me to yeah to uh, give them something to to watch. That's super cool. And and you're 100 percent right. BYU like you tell someone you play football at BYU, it's like them meeting a BYU football player is like so cool to them. <laughs> like I was at a wedding the other day, and someone found out I played football at BYU. And they were like, can I bring, like, a ball? Like, we were at the whatever, the dinner part, and the wedding was the next day. Like, can I bring a ball? Like, will you sign it for my son? I'm like, you don't even know who I am. Like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, sure, yeah, like, of course I'll do it. But I'm like, I could not even really be on the team. But <laughs> someone told you I'm a BYU football player, so you like it. But um, so what are some of your, like, hobbies? What are things you're doing when you're not playing football? I'm not playing football, man. I would say what I'm doing currently, I mean, I love um, – I love playing pickleball. Pickleball? I'm sort of like a pickleball enthusiast or whatever they call that. Yeah. Yeah, I'll be playing with any, any chance I get to play pickleball, man. I'm really? there. Who's uh, a who's who do you play pickleball with? 
Um, I used to play a lot with uh, just people back home, like with my brother-in-laws. Yeah. And then they have their groups. Um, I've played with, and then just people in the ward, and then yeah. p- people at school. Gotcha. I've been playing with Coach Al. Recently, I've been playing with Coach Al. Yeah? Yeah. Coach Al Papuno, that, I mean, that guy's good. Is he? He's pretty good, man. Is there anybody else on the team that you've played against or played with? I've played with, uh, like, Hinkley. Yeah. And with um, Mason, um, Ace, and Raider are two okay. young, youngins that I've been playing with uh, yeah, recently. Yeah. And uh, Sony, like, I mean, there's there's a bunch of boys on the team who actually love playing football, but when uh, when I have free time away from football and from school, I'll be playing pickleball, ping pong. I mean, we'd be playing ping pong every day. Yeah. But I feel like that's where I first started, like, like oh, man, I really wanted to get on the grind of trying to get good at ping pong. And then <laughs> everyone just started playing ping pong in the, yeah. in the locker rooms. And then pickleball came along. I feel like, yeah, so I'm. And you fell in love. Ping pong and pickleball, man. That's funny. We should have a. A pickleball tournament. Oh, yeah, we should. We should definitely. I grew up playing pickleball too, so I, I love pickleball. It's fun. Um, what do you What are you studying? I'm in uh, experience design management. Okay, what is that? It's in the business school. It's um, we more focus on like, um, fan experience. Oh, gotcha. Oh, experience uh, design management. Okay, experiential cool. Experiential design. So like making sure when someone goes to an event, they have a good time. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Trying to retain customers. Oh, sweet. The whole deal. I mean, and like my emphasis is in sports management. Oh, cool. So I'm um, pretty much my route as far as career goes is uh, becoming like a, a coach or an athletic director. Oh, cool. So that's um, kind of th- that's the route that I'm taking right now. So what got you into that? Was it just you wanted <coughs> to do that? And so that seemed like a good major or what? Well, my roommate, so... I don't know if you know Lopa, Leotawa, uh, Uriah. He was a DN for us. Um, his last year was last year. Was he here when I got here? And then no. shortly after? No, he, yeah, his last season was 2021, actually. Okay. No, so yeah, I, I don't know him then. Yeah, so he, that was his major. Okay. And he kind of just talked about it, and um, it was in the business school, so I was like, hey, experiential design, business school, has something to do with sports. I was like, I definitely want to stay in the sports realm after I'm done with football. Mm-hmm. Just because it's been a part of my life. Right. For my entire life. Um, something you love, something you're passionate about. So, yeah, after football is done, I definitely wanted to stay within, like, the sports realm. And then it being part of business, like, even better. And uh, just the more I looked into it, and I decided to, to apply, and then I got in. That's sweet. And um, it's all been about... You know, making connections and just trying to see um, pretty much where that can take me. Right. And I saw that it can it could keep me in within the sports realm, and so I just, you know, I, I went with it. That's super cool. Especially in, like, the sports, like, coaching world, too. It's like, you got to know somebody, right? You got to know a coach to for them to let you come be a part of the staff, whatever, work your way up, right? And then... Uh-huh. You know, if, if AD is what you want to do, I don't really know much about that. But, it's, I mean, the same thing ever goes, right? It's, like you say, connections. So, that's cool. What is, like, um, what are some of your, I don't know, how do I say it? Like, guilty pleasures. Like, what are some things that you like to indulge in or things that get you excited? Man, I definitely say I was, uh, was a lot into video games. Yeah. I haven't played much in a, in a bit, but I, I definitely grew up playing, like, Call of Duty. That's funny. Are you good? I'm I'm, I'm all right, you know. I'm terrible at video games. <laughs> I'll be the first to admit it. But are you, uh, so you said you, you haven't been playing a lot lately? Not lately, but I mean, as in, like, the past two months. Gotcha. Just been working and stuff, but, like, as far as guilty pleasure goes, like, I love playing games, most mostly Call of Duty. Yeah. And then I'd be, um... I also be just like watching anime. I love I love watching TV shows and anime. Anime? I haven't got much into the anime. What's your favorite TV show? Favorite TV show, man. I have I have a whole list. Um, I first started with Psych. You ever watch Psych? Mm-mm. I know what it is, but I never really got into. It. Yeah, she, she's yeah. nodding her head. I guess she watched it. <laughs> man, I used to watch Psych. Uh, there's uh, another TV series called Bones. Yeah. Okay. Watch Bones. I watched The Burn Notice. Okay. Aren't Pretty those much all like. Cop 
shows. They're like crime. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like mystery investigation type investigation. stuff. Yeah, no, I'm really into all like all those TV series. So like, whenever on the weekends and I have some time, definitely put to try to find a different uh, a different like crime show to watch. That's like, funny. Yeah, I've watched the like white collar. Yeah, that's definitely a pretty cool one. Um, Do, are you a movie guy too, or just TV shows? I'm. I would say I'm. I'm a movie guy. Uh, when it comes to movies that I find interesting, but I feel like um recently I've been watching a lot of Marvel movies. Oh yeah. I mean I've grown up watching Marvel movies. Gotcha. Starting from Captain America and then making its way down to Phase what is the end of Phase Four or something like that. Do you have a favorite superhero? Man, it was Captain America. I yeah. Have to say yeah. <laughs> Just uh. Everything that guy stands for, I don't know. I feel like, yeah, like a man. I, I can look up to this guy. <laughs> I like that. That's funny. Did you see the new Spider Man? Oh yeah. Well, are you talking uh, about the metaverse thing? Oh yeah. You like that? No, I loved it. That's awesome. Well, yeah, you like anime, I'm a, so that's right up your alley. It's like the best of both worlds. Yeah, no, I I, I definitely gave that like a twenty out of ten. That's funny. A lot of people did. Yeah. Not my type of movie, but I was like, if you like that type of stuff, you'd probably love it. I know. Yeah, no, it's definitely not for everyone, but. That's awesome. So I told you you got to think about this one. Uh, what's something about you that most people don't know? Something. Oh, yeah, I know you did. Um, I definitely was going to say I was the youngest of 10, but I feel like I've already said that. One, that thing, I will say, one thing I will say, though, is that um, a lot of people don't know that I'm, I'm adopted. Oh, you are? Yeah. <laughs> that changes everything. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, so, really so, uh, when were you adopted? When I was born. Okay. Yeah. So, so my, the people I call my parents. Yeah. They're actually my grandparents, but they're my mom's parents. Okay. Uh huh. So, are you the only adopted of the ten? Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. That's why you're nine years yeah. after. I thought maybe you're just an accident. That happens too. You know. Oh, well, it definitely was an accident. Still. Though. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you. Right at birth, you were adopted? Yeah. So my mom, because my mom had me at 19. Okay. That's why I said I was a, sort of an accident child. Okay. And then, um, you know, she's still trying to find, trying to figure out life. Yeah. And my grandparents are like, hey, you know, we can step in and take care of him. That's cool. Let me go out and try to figure things out. And that's so that's awesome. kind of how it was. That's way cool. So do you uh, ever see your birth mom? Yeah, no, I actually grew up with my mom. Okay, so she was still, like, there and, like, around. Yeah, definitely, definitely still around. Gotcha. Um, And she still is. Gotcha. Yeah, I love my mom. Um, I didn't grow up around my dad, so my dad was kind of out of the picture mm -hmm. up until, like, when I was around 16. Yeah. <clears throat> is uh, when I finally got to um, sort of, like, build a relationship with him and stuff. And it's been cool. I've... I've from him, I've got to meet a lot of my siblings. Uh huh. From him, I have about like probably 10, 11 siblings from my dad. Big family. Oh, yeah. No, definitely. Um, and then I have si uh, five siblings from my mom. That's way cool. So, I mean, people would ask me, when they ask me, like, oh, like, how many siblings do you have? Like, I, I count like my adopted family. Yeah. And then my mom and my dad, like, all together is probably like 24, Jeez. 23 people. But I definitely don't say that. I just say I'm the youngest of 10. That's still not. That's still a lot right there. Even then, people are like, whoa. So you've got a lot of people, like, that makes sense why you're such a nice guy now. Because you're just, like, <laughs> you're good at just love it. You have a big family, a lot of people to love. Uh, but that's that's really cool, actually. Thanks. And so you grew up with your, your, technically your grandparents, but they were just, like, your parents the whole time. And that was kind of, like, that's how it was. Like, you, did you, you called the mom and dad, and it was, like, yeah, it was it was sort of confusing at first because like mm -hmm. when my mom would come around, I'd call her mom, then I'd call my grandma, my mom, and I felt like because my mom, my grandma stepped up into that role, um, I just felt like that was necessary for me to call her mom, even sure. though she never she never like asked me, you know, like hey, like do you want to call me mom or anything? Just because she was played that mother figure in my life. Yeah, and um, I loved her just like she was my mom. So yeah, that's super cool. Dude, that's awesome. I mean, yeah, you, uh, definitely something I didn't know about you. So it's probably something a lot of people don't know about you. That falls into that category. Yeah, I guess so. I don't know. Here's another. Uh, how much do you squat? Oh, man. Uh, I'm pretty sure the last time I squat, they capped me at about like 
310 kilos. Let me do the math on that real quick. How many pounds is that? Probably like 660. So, um, you said they capped you? Yeah, they uh, they stopped me. Um, but the one thing that was cool about that was that, you know, we did like the measurement, uh, like the speed, bar speed. Mm -hmm. And um, they said that that was probably like the, the bar speed when I came up with 660. They say it was about like 80% of my max. That's crazy. What, uh, you said how many kilos was it? Like 310, 315. 310. That's 683. That's oh. a lot of pounds. Oh, wow. And they had to cap you at that. That's crazy. And then just recently, well, yeah, because I'm talking about 310 back when, like two years ago. Yeah. But then just recently they capped me at 660. I think that's what. That's what it was? That's what it was just recently. Dude, that's crazy. So I don't know if a lot of people knew that or not, but that's something if they didn't know, they need to know. So <laughs> I've never, I've never seen someone move so much weight. Like, Shoot. um, and like, so for those who don't know, obviously like you grew up in West Jordan. My cousin went to West Jordan. Uh, you played football with my cousin. And when I said, oh, you like, you guys, you guys know nice. So when I asked him, first thing his mom said was, oh, he's the nicest guy I've ever met. I love him. And then. My cousin says he's the strongest dude I've ever met. That dude is crazy. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, yeah, he's pretty. Like, I didn't really know. And then we maxed out. And I was like, holy cow. So, um, no, dude, it's been super fun having you on. I appreciate you taking the time. I know you had a busy day. Yeah, I, know. Uh, I know you're doing a lot. So it means a lot that you're able to come on the pod. Um, and I know a lot of people are going to be excited to get to know you better. You've been here for a while. Um, and so I know you've got fans out there that, uh, we'll be excited to see this. Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I appreciate it, my man. Man, thank you.